In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a very simple data migration between Snowflake and Yellow Brick. To begin a data migration, we'll open the Migration Wizard from here. We'll then connect to the source database. I'm going to choose a Snowflake database named Worldwide Importers for this demo. We'll then connect to our Yellow Brick target connection. There are a number of mapping configuration options on this screen. We'll use the default settings that have been set up for Snowflake, and we'll also select Probe Max Lengths. This probes the maximum length of the data and is needed because Snowflake returns text columns without a length, and this isn't supported by Yellow Brick. We now fetch the source schema metadata. On this screen, you'll see the source tables. If I highlight a table on the left, you'll see how everything is pulled into a generic model, and we will see the source type and the matching target type in this window. That's all based on metadata. The bottom window contains the object DDL, which can be edited, as well as a tab for adding notes and for displaying the execution results. A primary key has been detected on this table, which we can see if we click on indexes here. Based on that primary key from Snowflake, you can see down the bottom that the distribute on clause has been added. This screen is highly configurable with buttons that allow you to customize the DDL execution. When I hit Execute DDL, it launches this screen, which displays all the DDL while it's executing. In this case, there is one execution error, which we can see when we click the Execution Results tab. It's reporting that there is a text field that is longer than the 64K that Yellow Brick supports. We can exclude this table from the migration by unchecking this checkbox, but I'm going to leave it checked to show how this will also be picked up later during the validation process. If you wish, you can save the entire project, which includes all the metadata you're looking at, and the execution logs, which is very handy if you need to come back later to see what happened to a particular object. We're done with this screen, so we'll now look at the data migration screen. On the left here, we've got the export from Snowflake that's using the CSV exporter. On the right, we've got support for YB Load, which is Yellow Brick's accelerated loader, as well as other import options. We've selected the YB Load option, and now we'll generate the data migration plan, which is given a name by the system, or you can choose your own name here. This action launches the migration dashboard. If we've detected any primary keys, they will be checked here. Primary keys are important for the validation process because it allows us to join source and target tables, and we can then detect specific records that may have been changed. We're going to launch this migration job and return to the dashboard to see how the job is going. The green ticks show that the Snowflake export is complete for all of them, but the YB load import on the yellow brick side is still running for that one table. When all jobs are complete, this window pops up. If we click on the job itself, it will show you the list of steps in the right-hand window. Each step of each job is logged, and if there are any warnings or errors, they'll appear here. It's easy to see exactly why they were caused so that they can be rectified where necessary. The execution log also shows details of the template that was executed, the performance stats, and the custom logs, in this case, the YB load log.
Now we are going to do the validation job. Before we do though, we'll hack some data that we've just migrated to yellow brick so we can demonstrate a validation error. Using the built-in database explorer, we're going to change the description of a color in a single row of the colors table and we'll change one of the cold room temperatures. When we run the validation job, it should pick up the two validation errors between source and target values. Let's return to the migration dashboard and launch the validation jobs. The validation jobs are running, and you'll see that two validation errors have been flagged, as well as the error on the DDL execution that we observed earlier. Once the job has finished, we can return to the dashboard and investigate the validation errors by highlighting the columns of interest and then fetching the source and target records for drill down analysis. The fields highlighted in red display the mismatch and using the information displayed on the screen, you can analyze why the mismatch occurred and resolve the problem. Returning to the previous screen, we would repeat this on the other table reporting errors. Finally, you'll see that the original DDL execution error is displayed here. We hope you found this brief demonstration valuable. To find out more about SDF's functionality, how it handles the differences between the two systems, and how a data migration using SDF would work in practice, check out the SDF webpage at smart-associates.biz slash products slash SDF.